Welcome to the People First Leaders Podcast. My name is Doug Utberg, Marine Corps veteran, founder CEO of ExpenserDeuce.com, and I have absolutely nothing to sell you. The purpose of this commercial-free show is to honor the leaders who approach life as go-givers by putting their people and customer value first. Stick around until the end of the show and we'll reveal how you can be our next guest in about 20 minutes. Let's go. Before we get going, a little bit of introduction. This podcast exists for one purpose, and that is to bring founders and CFOs the tools that they need to increase profits without layoffs. I am the host, Doug Utberg, and you're listening to the Terminal Value Podcast. We have Ryan Margolin with us today, and we are going to be talking about the secrets to becoming the best you that's possible. And of course, as I'm sure everybody is, who's listening can figure out by now, this is going to take a personal development bent, which is actually a tremendously important topic because a lot of us, you know, we went to school, we went to college, et cetera, and then we got out into the work world and I'm like, okay, I'm done with school. I don't have to worry about that stuff anymore. Not so fast. The truth of the matter is that if you want to become the best you possible, if you want to achieve your highest possible potential, Personal development has to become a perpetual, never-ending process. And that's what I want to talk about a little bit with Ryan today. So anyway, Ryan, don't let me go on too long. Please introduce yourself. No, thanks. Thanks for having me, Doug. I'm really looking forward to having a chat. Look, my name is Ryan Margolin. I'm the CEO of Professional Hair Labs. We're a cosmetic manufacturer that buys not only our own branded products globally, but also we custom formulate and private label contract manufacture for many companies around the world. That journey has been embedded into me since I was younger. Parents grew up in the, the hair industry. I learned a lot about it from them. Ultimately, you know, there were a lot of changes in, in, in my childhood when it came to their business operations, but we landed in a position early 2009 where I decided to learn a bit more about it as an opportunity arose. And from there, we just took the company and made some plans and helped it grow exponentially over the uh -huh. next decade. That's really who I am in, in a bird's eye view. Look, I'm a dad of three kids and we live in Wexford in Ireland. We have two locations in the business, one in Europe and one in Florida. We, we operate between both of those and I spend time between both. And matter of curiosity. So for US, you chose Florida as opposed to say New York, California, someplace else. I'm fascinated to know why. It's just the way it worked out. I spent my first, the first 14 years of my life in Florida. Okay. That's really where the business ended up being based. Look, it was for really no other reason than that. It could have just as easily been New York or somewhere else. Okay. That was utterly and completely off topic. So <laughs> let's go through the personal development sphere. So in the mind of Ryan Margolin, what does personal development mean? I think I, the meaning of that question really depends on the person that, that it's applying to. For uh -huh. me, it actually means the journey of which you improve not only your own life, but the lives of those around you. Because naturally, being the best version of yourself that will naturally have a knock-on effect to those. Mm -hmm. and for me, it's about that journey, about inspiring people, about helping people, learning how to be empathetic and being able yeah. to read situations of trying situations where you have to put yourself in the shoes of another in order to understand the dynamics or the intricacies of what you're dealing with. Part of that, part of that process is dealing with some of those limiting beliefs in yourself and also addressing some of the insecurities and the characteristics that you have. Because look, at the end of the day, no matter, no, there's no one that can convince me there's not natural hereditary characteristics that we carry from, from our mother and our father that ultimately have to be broken down to get through barriers that are holding us back. Absolutely, completely agree. And one of the things that I've become increasingly sensitized to as I've gotten older is how our patterns that shape in your childhood, in your early adulthood, in your developmental years, throughout your career, that shape your view. And I think there's a tendency for people to say, okay, if only my parents had done X, or if only my parents had done Y. I, I think that's actually a little specious. And here's the reason why. Okay, so... Unless you have a tremendously destructive household when you're growing up, things like drug addiction, abuse, the, the really bad stuff, the kind of stuff you hear on the news. Okay. Unless you have that kind of environment, there is going to be some baggage that you carry into your life. And because you also have to bear in mind that your parents, they have their own baggage they're dealing with. And so they have to try to figure out how to address their own emotional hangups while trying to facilitate your emotional development. I need to understand how my development has, what it has created and what I'm and where I'm at right now, but I do not want to go past the threshold of trying to blame my parents for that because A, I can't do anything about it, so it's pointless. 
And then B is that it just takes the focus off of, I need to figure out what I am going to do for my life right now. And like, for example, in my case, I was a by the book Gen Xer, right? Go to school, study really hard, get really good grades, go to college, study really hard. I joined them. I was, I did two mission trips to with the youth groups while I was in high school. I had the corporate career. I was a to president of Toastmasters, president of my church congregation for nine straight years. And then in April of 2020, I got let go from my corporate job. We had a new chief information officer comes in, decides they're going to do the, uh, the Silicon Valley shuffle and people get let go. I'm on the list, poof, hit the street, same time as COVID. And I'm like, what the hell? Like I did everything right. And here I am basically trying to figure out what my life is going to be. That's what happens. Th there is not an unbroken string of bottom left to top right, but they uh, climb the staircase to the ideal life. That just doesn't exist. And I think a lot of us, myself included, thought that if you did everything right, that's exactly how it would go. And this is it. I think, I think success at its core is often seen as a type of psychological science based on this big <laughs> like equation. And if you combine the components, you'll effectively be able to revolutionize your life and obtain the yeah. success you wanted. But look, I mean, that, that thought is, is as long as a piece of string. Is it that simple? Can you follow a pattern or a process to get to that? And in some cases, the truth is maybe you can, but I think that the real question amongst all of that, that everyone should be asking themselves is if it is possible, how do we do it? Or how do we at least start it? Because our blueprint, which is look, our, there's no journey that each of us has that is unequivocally equal or the same in any way, shape or form. And yeah. I, I believe well, the blue, our own blueprint, it's not an exhaustive list that one person or one experience or one source can give you. I think it's a collective of all experiences, mm -hmm. good or bad, that they weave themselves together to create foundations, which, you know, you build your own pathway. Yeah. So look, look, I think at the end of the day, when you're looking at that whole process, there's so much out of your control. And the only thing you can really truly control is what goes on up in here. And if you get that sharp and you get that strong, your mind will be able to allow you to overcome most of what gets in your way and change the views that are holding you back from achieving yeah. whatever it is that you want. I want to expand on that a little bit because I am in complete alignment and one of the things that has really has really spoken to me in actually throughout my adult life, but really in recent years, is you know, I've gone back to a lot of the Stoic teachings from people like Seneca and Marcus Aurelius. And most people, when they think of Stoic, they think of Spock from Star Trek. Yeah. And that's actually not quite it. The idea of Stoicism is to have an emotional detachment from circumstances. It is not that Stoics don't like to have fun. It's that Stoics don't get depressed if whatever they're doing at the current moment isn't fun. Is yes. that you, it is an understanding that circumstances are what they are and I can't control them. So I am not going to have anxiety over them. And I think that's a bridge that a lot of people never learn how to cross. Now, I happen to believe that, that social media is intentionally designed to pull people into a self-reinforcing narcissistic loop <laughs> that makes that Oh, but impossible, but that's not the topic for today's conversation. Of course, but look, there, there's truth to that as well. It's look, I just think it's having that ability to emotionally self-regulate and yeah. to be in control of understanding what you can change and what you can't change is it, I think that's a massive attribute to have, but ultimately there's some people that are naturally born with that. In most cases, you have to teach yourself that. Precisely. I would say you absolutely need to teach it to yourself. And because I think there's a couple of ways you can fall off the fence, right? One way that you can fall off the fence, which is where most people end up, is that their circumstances determine their outlook. So in other words, when things are going well, they're in a good mood. That's right. If things don't go well, they get in a bad mood. And if things don't go well, days, weeks, months in a row, they get depressed, they get negative, et cetera, et cetera. I think another way that people that you can fall off the fence is to say, you know what? I'm so detached from the outcomes that I'm not even really going to end. <laughs> But therein lies the danger is that but therein you know, lies the danger. A part of my philosophical underpinning is that my life doesn't just exist for me. Don't get me wrong. I am a big part of it. And in fact, that's one of the areas that I found that I need to develop is that I had a lot of social conditioning when I was growing up to basically ignore my own needs, to basically say that if you worry about yourself, if you take care of yourself, that's selfish. You don't want to be a selfish person. You have to put everything else first. Um, that's not healthy over the long term. And but but the thing is that I've come to understand that it's not just about me. That's actually the easiest part for me to understand. There there is a part that involves me, but what I really need to do to make my life of value is to bring value to other people. Yeah. And that when when you put that frame on things, that what it does is it 
at least in my view, it almost, you know, it creates a sense of duty to do things that will create a value that outlives you. That in, in most cases, with most people, the primary way that, that that unfolds is through your kids. That is the principal yeah. way that most people are able to pass on value that will, that will extend beyond themselves. And I actually personally believe that the most productive thing that most people can do for the human race is to raise healthy, productive children. Yeah, I agree. Ultimately, at the core of it, they, they're the generations that are going to carry on what you leave in the world. Yeah, 100%. I agree with that. And especially because any financial assets that you accumulate will all be gone by three generations anyway. Yes, pretty much. <laughs> if you're lucky. If you're lucky, yeah. It's you know, your, it's your two generations, all yeah. gone. But they'll be starting over going to community college again. Yeah, that's the look. And that's the truth. Look, you can put the best, your best foot forward and do the best things for yourself strategically, financially, whatever way you want to spin it. But ultimately that, that will probably in the next 50 to yeah. 70, 75 years, just be gone. To me, really understanding that was a part of that detachment from circumstances because one, at one point you said, oh, why even bother? You know, who's yeah. going to bother try to do stuff? Just, just live life, have fun, go out, get drunk on the weekends. And then go do it on, do it again next week. Okay. But building a legacy of still has value, but you just, yeah. you just have to understand what it is and don't try to mentally construct it into something that's not realistic. Yes, I mean, of course, exactly. I want to create an emotional legacy for my kids. I want to make sure that they have financial advantages and I want to make sure that they have assets to work with, but I don't hold any illusions that there are going to be statues erected in my honor 150 years from now. There will probably be nobody alive who knows my name by that point. Exactly. Yeah. And that I, look, I think that's the thing. It's just that at the end of the day, if you can put your head on, on the pillow at night and you're happy with what you've done and what you've given, then I think that's more than halfway to a win. Yeah, precisely. This has been a great conversation. I think we've just covered the, the internal psychological part of that personal development. Let's move into a little more of the, of the hard skills that can help us to create more value out in the marketplace. What have you found is the most effective way to develop those skills? So for me, it was actually only recently, within the last six to eight months, I had to intentionally review the last decade of my own life and figure out how to simplify the core things that I that contributed to my personal development and what I needed to learn. So I broke it down into, into five key parts. And look, the, those five key parts are is that number one, no one is coming to save you. Number two, right. quite, you need to be quite intentional about managing your focus. Number three, realizing that in any capacity is progress and it's only really a loss if you don't learn from it. Circle is number four. It, I think that's vitally important. And then being able to, in, in my eyes, control the fire that is fear. I think that that that's one of the key parts, because look, at the end of the day, the fire has ability to do one of two things. It can stop you in your tracks and burn everything down around you, or you can control it and it can also keep you warm and cook you food. So, right. you know, the analogy of fire and fear, once you can understand that dynamic and that you do have full control over it, I think for me, those were the five key things that I broke it down to that's helped me overcome essentially 95% of what I've dealt with over the last 10 years. Yeah. And I'd like to expand on that idea a little bit too, because I think that there's a tendency, and I know this is how I thought when I was younger, to view things like skill development as it should be a linear progression, right? I put built, I get skill A, B, C, D, E, and F. Eventually I have developed enough skills to where I should be able to do some new thing that will have some great benefit. Yeah, exactly. But the uh, path those... usually isn't quite that straight. Normally, the way that it works, it, at least what I've observed, is there's there, there's some some situation and or catastrophe that comes up, and you have to go figure it out. And so, what you do is you put you generate you develop a whole bunch of skills on the fly without really intentionally doing so, and then something else comes up, and so you have to develop a whole bunch of skills on the fly, and then you might even go and start studying some things. Well, eventually, what's going to happen is the cross connections between all those skills that you developed, some intentional, some unintentional is what really creates that ability to go out and, and be more productive or be able to go out and produce more results in whatever you're doing. Yes, yeah, exactly. And because I think the most important part of, of leading, at least in my observation, is really having a firm understanding of that why. Because if you don't have that why really firmly, firmly understood, then it just becomes too easy to default on positional authority, at which point you're not leading, you're managing. And I think that there are 
comparatively few people in positions of leadership who actually do lead. Most people manage and think it's leading. Not that there's not that managing doesn't have value, but leading and managing are very different. Of course they are. And to be a manager is in my eyes is too hands on. Yes. To be a leader is, is to basically allow people the opportunity to manage themselves and know what they have to do and get it done and provide them with not only the the insight and the knowledge, but also the inspiration as well of knowing that what they do matters and giving them their sense of purpose. Because at the end of the day, I'm finding more often than not that people find more enjoyment in their professional life when they have a purpose and it's not always about the paycheck. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And also I think as a, as an effective leader, one of the things that you're doing is you're continually increasing the capacity and skill set of your team. And yes. that is something that you cannot do from a transactional perspective. It has to be from it has to be from a leadership perspective. A transformational perspective. Yeah. yeah. It can't be transactional because you know what? It's uh I just think it's too surface level. You know, when it's yeah. transactional, you don't I just think it transactional management actually kills progress. I yes. just think it, it just it steps on every bit of momentum that you can possibly build. Yeah. Then because I think one of the thoughts that you're triggering here, which is just one of my observations from my corporate career, and which I think ex- it extends down to entrepreneurship and small business as well, is that the way that a lot of businesses progress is they'll start with some big idea. And then that idea will grow really fast. And then if they're really successful, it will shape or alter either a piece or an entire industry. I may get myself in a little bit of trouble with this, but we'll think about, like, say, Apple Computer, particularly because they had a tremendous innovation phase right between the iPod, the iPhone, the iPad, the, they were creating entirely new categories and were, were really driving the, the technology economy. And then at some point what happens is somebody gets the bright idea to profit maximize. And so then what happens is, is your innovation gets killed because yep. it's too speculative. Prices go up, reliability goes down, service goes down. That's exactly what Apple's doing right now. They are just they are just monetizing their existing client base. There is very little in the way of real, true, new development. It is all it's all evolutionary on what's already out there. Microsoft did the exact same thing when I was at Intel. That's what Intel did. That's what General Electric did. That's what all of these big major companies. That's the trap they fall into. It's because, yes, when you profit optimize, you will make gob tons of money for yeah. a little while. Then yeah. you will eventually become less relevant. And if you don't figure that, if you don't figure out that's happening and change course, you can eventually become irrelevant and of either course. go yeah. bankrupt, end up getting acquired, whatever. And yeah, that's where they, and you're a hundred percent. Like I even noticed it myself. You said you had back, a background with Intel. Yeah. Look, I'm an Apple certified technician from many years ago. And I even noticed like what one of my other businesses is in electronic repairs. Uh-huh. And uh, I even noticed that exact thing, even with Apple is that innovation is slowing down with them. Yeah. And it has been for many years, you open up an Apple device and you see very little in the difference between models. Now it's, it's really just aesthetic or aesthetic uh-huh. changes. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And th- so, and because then this is one of the things that it really took me a long time to wrap my head about around this because my background is in finance. And so, of course, like a good finance guy, I'm thinking, okay, the, uh, the object of the company is to maximize shareholder value. Most people think shareholder value means you want to have earnings per share as high as humanly possible, in which case the, uh, the profit optimizing playbook is precisely the right thing to do. Except that it necessarily has a short time frame. And it will eventually result in your in a regression toward irrelevance. If Apple stays on its existing path, at some point it will lose the technology edge. It it will regress backward. At some point they will over monetize their their user base, and they they can kill the golden goose. Everybody says no, they're too big. They're too. Nobody is too no. big. No, nope. nope. nobody is immune to failure. Maybe the primary broker dealer banks who are authorized to deal U.S. Treasuries because they'll basically get bailed out no matter how yeah. big they, how badly they screw things how up. But they other screw- than them, other than them, nobody is immune from failure. Yeah. It's a fact. Yeah, no, it's a fact. I agree with everything you've said there. Yeah, look, I think, and that's the thing. You always have to be pushing the lines of innovation where you can and creating new solutions for problems that that your client base can use. And if you don't, you go backwards. Yeah. 
Yes. And I think then bringing this back full circle to the per, to per, the personal development side, one of the things that I've become more and more sensitized to as I've gotten older is the idea of thinking of development less as a place that I want to get to and more as a and more as a process that I want to go through because if you focus on making sure that you're continually growing I think that is a far better focus than being worried about say hitting a certain net worth target because what ends up happening in an overwhelming majority of cases is that you fault the fence one of two ways either a you have a net worth target that you you're trying to manifest or you're going through the woo woo nonsense of you're trying to figure out some way that you can attract wealth to you without doing work i'm um, yeah spoiler alert it involves work but okay but on the one hand you set this you set some sort of ridiculously huge goal that you pretty much have are never able to achieve at which point you will eventually become become disappointed depressed whatever another option is you set a big goal and you achieve it and then you say now what? This is astronaut syndrome. This is the, the all the people who went to the moon in the 1960s. They touched down on the moon. They had the ticker tape parade. They were national heroes. Now what? Exactly. And so because and that's why I think that it's really about the process of growth, not necessarily the tangible achievements. The tangible achievements are fine. They enable you to do a lot. But if you wrap too much of what you're thinking about in those tangible pieces, you're either going to, you're going to fall off one way or the other, and both places will lead to you being depressed. Yeah, no, at the end of the day, I, I think that's it. You have to, you have to build the habit of accepting the journey because look, there's no business leader, successful entrepreneur that, that at any level that are not still learning day to day. There's yes. always, lessons, there's always things. And once you accept that and you allow that to embed itself in your mind, you're just in, in a constant phase of growth because you're no longer afraid to push yourself into a position that makes you uncomfortable. And you're open to dealing with whatever comes knowing that everything is temporary and there will be yeah. a point, we'll figure it out. You might make some mistakes, but ultimately you learn from it. And I think the best analogy, I first heard this from Tony Robbins, but what he said was when you have a child and you're teaching them to walk, how many chances do you give them to learn how to walk? You've had 30 tries. All right, we're giving up. We're yeah. done. No, keep going until it works. Yes, that's how you do it. You just keep yeah. going until it works. Try not to repeat the same failure more than once and just keep going until it works. That's the formula. It is because you know what? You will figure it out. And I think people in general underestimate their ability of what they can do. I think it's a lack of belief in oneself and I think it's a lack of self-confidence. And unfortunately, that does mostly fall into the environment you allow yourself to stay in as well. So yeah, look, you keep going, you will figure it out. Exactly. This has been a lot of fun. Ryan, give us one or two last thoughts and then let everybody know where they can learn more about you or where they can connect with you. Yeah, look, it's, look, I think my last thoughts around this conversation would be is that, look, ultimately you have to learn how to, how to just accept failure as a part of the process. You can't be afraid of it. It's a part of the human characteristic. And I think ultimately failure is a beautiful thing because it provides us with the opportunity to find success in something that doesn't work out. So my thought on that would be just, Whatever you do, just keep going. My look in terms of where you can reach out to us, we have a website, prohairlabs.com. That's our business website. We're on all major social media platforms, TikTok, Instagram, book. My main hangout is LinkedIn. So if there's ever any questions around anything on this topic, I'm open to having a conversation. I really appreciate the, the opportunity to be on your show as well. It was a really enjoyable conversation. Likewise. All right, Ryan, you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. What I would like you to do right now is if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe so you don't miss any of our new episodes. And also visit us online at Facebook. Just go to facebook.com slash terminal value and then let me know your thoughts. I want to know what did you like? What didn't you like? What can I create next that will bring value to you? And also feel free to visit us at terminalvaluepodcast.com where you can leave a review and where you can see all the places where this podcast is published. I really appreciate your time, and I hope you have a great day. Thank you so much for listening to the People First Leaders podcast. If you are a successful People First founder or CEO who would like to be on this show, please visit peoplefirstleaders.net forward slash guest. If this interview resonated, would you please share it on social media? Just take a quick screenshot on your phone and post it on your favorite social channel, then make sure to tag me at Doug Value so I can give you and your business a shout out on a future episode. If you know somebody who'd be a great guest, please tag them on social and include the hashtag PeopleFirstLeaders. 
I really love seeing your posts and guest suggestions. We're releasing new content and episodes all the time, so make sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any new episodes. Your thumbs up, ratings, and reviews go a long way to help promote the show, and they mean a lot to me personally. And also, I would like to connect with you on social. My handle is at Doug Value, or you can just go to peoplefirstleaders.net where all of the links are posted. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next time.